Plate Motion Engineering Internship Day 2, Modeling a Tsunami Wave. A reminder that you can access your digital resources in the lesson brief of every lesson. Even though activities are available in Amplify lessons, you will be working in the Futura workspace. You can find the Futura workspace in your Amplify main menu. In this lesson, we use a physical tsunami tank to investigate how tsunami waves form, showing cause and effect. Activity 1. Connecting to Futura Workspace. Students, open Futura Workspace and read the daily message from the project director. Remember the new message, titled Day 2, Understanding Tsunamis, should be at the top of the inbox. Ensure you are clear on your tasks for the day. Completing a modeling of tsunami wave sheet. Making annotations for Chapter 3 in the dossier. After hours, rereading and revising annotations for Chapters 2 and 3 in the dossier. Introducing the daily message notes. A daily message tells the focus for each day during your internship. Each message will include some key ideas and list deliverables, or tasks you need to do. As interns at Futura, each day you will begin by reading the daily message from your project director, Hannah Wong. You can confer with your colleagues and look at the glossary in the dossier if you need more support with engineering and project terms in the daily messages. Researching and collaborating are important practices for engineers. You'll need to take notes in order to keep track of important information. In the Futura workspace, select New Note to create a blank note. When you have a message open, selecting New Note pins the message open and moves it to the left panel, giving you a blank note on the right. Students, create a new note in the Futura workspace. Give your note the title, Daily Message Notes. Students, title your note Daily Message Notes in Futura Workspace this way, so you will be able to identify it easily in the future. Record today's date and the subject of the message. Writing the date and message subject will help you separate the notes you make for this message from ones you will make in the future. You'll also want to document important information like any deliverables. What important information should we record from today's daily message? You might respond, Modeling a Tsunami Wave Sheet, Annotations for Chapter 3 of the Dossier, After Hours, Reread and Revise Annotations in Chapter 2 and 3 of the Dossier. Students, revisit today's daily message and create your own daily message notes. For each daily message, you will return to your daily message notes to add new information. Modeling a Tsunami Wave Remember, you will be designing a warning system to help people evacuate in the event of a tsunami. Tsunami, a large ocean wave caused by a sudden shift in the seafloor. Next, we'll watch a video showing two different visualizations of a tsunami in the Indian Ocean. Notice that both views show Sri Lanka, the area for your warning system. Students, play the video. Note the secondary peaks of the wave after the first peak hits the shore. What did you observe as you watched the video? Students, go back and replay the video as needed. Tsunamis can travel far across the ocean. People may be at risk of being hit by a tsunami even if they are too far away to feel the earthquake that started it, so warning systems are important. Models can be a digital, like tsunami alert, or they can be physical. Today you will use a physical model to learn more about tsunami waves. Hannah provided some materials to help you model and explore the cause of a tsunami wave. All models are similar to the natural world, but also have limitations or other ways in which they differ from the natural world. Students, if you can get these materials, do so. You will need one modeling a tsunami wave sheet, one flexible straw, one tsunami tank model, eight miniature houses, and a towel. Students, fill each tank with one liter of water. You will work in groups and take turns figuring out ways to model a tsunami wave. Review the directions. Modeling a tsunami wave. Step one. Set up buildings on the shore of the tsunami tank before each test. Step two, take turns testing how to generate each wave type. Record your observations. Wind-driven wave. Use a straw to create a wind-driven wave that travels forward toward the shore. Do not touch the straw to the water. Tsunami wave. Using what you have read so far about tsunamis, create a tsunami wave. Step three, complete the conclusions question on the sheet. You can move parts of the model as long as it stays in place on the table, 
Don't pick up the model and don't take in part any of the pieces. Be careful not to splash or spill the water. You will each write down your observations and then answer the conclusion questions. Students, complete your tests, record observations and conclusions. Let's look at these diagrams and discuss what you discovered when you modeled tsunami waves. How was the model realistic and how was it simplified? How were you able to generate a tsunami wave? How were the two types of waves different? Which locations on the shore were most affected by the tsunami? What's something you have learned that can help you begin to think about your tsunami warning system designs? You might respond, realistic, it had real water in it and the waves moved the way real waves do. Simplified, the seafloor in the model was smooth plastic instead of sand and rock. We pulled up on the plastic sheet to make the seafloor move up suddenly. The tsunami waves were bigger and more destructive than the wind-driven waves. The lowest locations closest to the shoreline were most affected, location C in the diagrams. The tsunami tank is a model of an ocean system, showing how something that happens in one part of the ocean has an effect on another part of the system. Activity 2. Reading about plate motion and tsunamis. Today you will continue your background reading. Today you will continue your background research by reading and annotating chapter 3, Plate Motion and Tsunamis. Open the dossier. Remember, you can select the link in the daily message and use the table of contents to navigate to chapter 3, Plate Motion and Tsunamis. In addition to recording your own questions and connections as you read, you can make annotations to help you answer this focus question. Asking questions and making connections are important parts of reading like an engineer. Also, remember to carefully review the diagrams and captions. You can use the glossary or use the reveal feature if you need more support with engineering and project terms. Read Chapter 3, Plate Motion and Tsunamis. Make annotations about the relationship between plate boundaries and tsunamis. Take several minutes to read and annotate Chapter 3 of the dossier, Plate Motion and Tsunamis. Discussing Annotations. After reading, discuss the following questions with a partner. What questions did you write down? What connections did you make? What words are you unsure about? What annotations did you make to help you understand and answer the focus question, what is the relationship between plate boundaries and tsunamis? Students, return to Amplify Science and select the Reading About Plate Motion and Tsunamis activity. Answer the self-assessment question on the activity and then select Hand In. This step is optional. What annotations did you make that helped you answer our focus question? What is the relationship between plate boundaries and tsunamis? You might respond, Earthquakes are caused by plate motion. Tsunamis are caused by very strong earthquakes at certain types of plate boundaries. Most tsunamis are caused by convergent plate boundaries. When one plate subducts under the other and the top plate pushes up, the ocean water above. How are tsunamis related to plate motion and different types of plate boundaries? Students, summarize the relationship between plate motion and tsunamis. Some points include the following. Only earthquakes with very large magnitudes produce a tsunami. Earthquakes that cause tsunamis usually occur under the ocean or very near the ocean. Convergent boundaries can result in vertical seafloor movement that can produce a tsunami. Divergent and transform boundaries do not typically produce tsunamis because the plates do not move the seafloor vertically enough to move the water above. What type of plate boundary must have been represented by tsunami model that you used earlier? You might respond, convergent. It was showing subduction. Activity 3, after hours work. For this task, you will reread chapters 2 and 3 and add to or revise your annotations. You will reread with a new focus. Do all earthquakes cause tsunamis? Remember, scientists and engineers often revisit texts when they are conducting research. Rereading this chapter will help you understand the problem you are preparing to solve. You do not need to submit your annotation revisions. Students, complete the after-hours work. End of Day 2